It's been an incredible year for Idaho's bighorn sheep. In the last five months, Idaho Fish and Game, with assistance from Idaho Wild Sheep Foundation, has captured, health tested, and collared 215 bighorn sheep in nine different Idaho populations. This is epic. It's also not easy or cheap. This takes money, manpower, and coordination from a lot of folks who care a lot about bighorn sheep. This is being made possible through two partnerships, ION and Tri-State. ION works with the California Bighorn Sheep of Idaho, Oregon, and Nevada, while Tri-State concentrates on the Rocky Mountain Bighorn Sheep of Idaho, Oregon, and Washington. All three states are coming together, doing a lot of good work here in this part of the world, and so the Wild Sheep Foundation is happy to support. We are down on the Jarbridge River, been surveying bighorn sheep. One point in history, there was more bighorn sheep down here than there were elk and mule deer. Disease has changed that. I can't stress how important it is for the role that hunters can play in the conservation and management of wild sheep. We have questions, different questions for different populations of sheep around the state. You know, so for in the Waihees, we needed some movement data. We wanted an update on their health status. We wanted some habitat use data. And we're also interested in cost-specific mortality there. Populations have gone down on the last couple of surveys. And from sportsmen's observations, we're worried about survival rates, predation rates. And so we want to be able to put some real numbers behind that to be able to get accurate cause of death to determine what is killing our sheep and how, what their survival rates are. Jim Sage is a unique opportunity, but it also creates some, some challenges for us. It's a unique landscape, but it's essentially an island of, of habitat surrounded by private agricultural land. It's a larger scale project. It's going over multiple jurisdictions. The funding that it takes to do one of these projects is pretty extensive, and funding is critical. But this year, we're looking at multiple populations. We're really going big. In the South Beaverhead, we're interested in their health. We have radio collared them in the past, and now we need a new update on their health, and they're a candidate for a test and remove project if they are still infected with MLD. Here today on the Lower Salmon River, working with the Idaho Fish and Game, we're expanding off the work that's been done in Hell's Canyon, which is presently a Moby free. And this population has had a long-term infection. We're trying to determine whether we can improve the health of this population. The way we're approaching this project, it's, it's new. You know, we've done a lot of work over the years in Hell's Canyon. That's been a real kind of continuous project that we've gained a lot of information from. We're out here catching bighorn sheep for the Tri-State Project, which involves Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. Uh, we worked in Idaho yesterday. We're on the Oregon side today, and we're having a good day so far. We're excited to be out working. I don't know, it's just kind of a pretty deep feeling of some kind. I don't know how you would explain the feeling, but future generations are going to have a chance to enjoy like, like we're enjoying in today. I've been fortunate to draw a tag in Idaho, so I have hunted bighorns. Um, this is the first time I've ever got to put my hands on a live wild sheep, and it was an emotional experience, I would say, just to kind of get to touch them and, and kind of be a part of this. To be doing something to give back and help expand these populations, give more people opportunities to, to spend time in the field with them. Idaho is leading the way with an aggressive and expansive plan, and the Idaho Wild Sheep Foundation's part would not have been possible without all of you.